Were the Disney Channel games actually any good? Wait, the video games, not the actual Disney Channel games. Okay, yeah. I've talked a lot about the movie and TV show tie-in video game, and we even had our own one made. And recently I was kinda wondering how many shows at Disney actually got made into a game. And oh boy, it's a lot. And I've played a decent amount of them actually, and there are definitely a ton I haven't played, though one we can definitely check off the list. I then started wondering how these games differ from their show counterparts. Like a lot of these tie-in games gamify shows for no reason, or make up a completely new storyline, which can start to make them feel extremely different from their source material. But honestly, where to begin? Well, here we are at Video Games New York to see what Disney Channel games they have. And again, video games. In fact, yeah, okay, that's better. Entering in, I went straight for the Game Boy section. I initially wanted to see if they had one that was unopened, cause man, I haven't opened up a brand new Game Boy game in who knows how long, but I didn't see any unopened ones. Then looked at others that were open, and while they did have some sequels to some Disney Channel games, I gotta start with the first one in the series. And the closest one I could find here was The Little Einsteins, though not really the type of show we are looking for. I also looked through this kids game show box, but was still coming up empty. Checked out Wii, N64, for NES, still nothing specifically Disney Channel, and honestly I almost left until I remembered that the DS exists, and these ones are kinda tucked away in here, but we finally found some, but you'll have to wait and see which ones we got. Alright, so it is the next day, and I'm about to sit down and play our games, but I just wanted to take a second to say like and subscribe, and consider becoming a member so you can see my whole gameplay of all these games. Now with each one of these games, I do want to compare and break down a few things. First, how do characters look and act in in comparison to their on-screen counterparts. Second, we'll take a look at the storyline accuracy, mainly asking how much creative liberty did they take. Then we'll look for any Easter eggs, such as the environment they're in or other nods to the show. This is kind of acting like a bonus point section. Then we'll also just touch on the game as a whole and give it a score on if it's any good, which will finally give us a total score of how well the game portrayed the TV show. And I do want to preface that I did not play all these games all the way through, but I did spend several hours with each one. And first up, Sunny with the chance for the Nintendo DS. I was actually pretty excited when this show came out, giving Demi Lovato her true chance to shine outside of As the Bell Rings and Camp Rock, and this game is by far the most interesting one we will look at today. Opening up the game, you are greeted with these chibi-like avatars of the main cast, Zora, Grady, Nico, Sunny, Chad Dylan Cooper, and Tawny. All of them generally look like their characters, though I don't think I would have second-guessed if this same avatar of Sunny was used as the avatar for Carly and some iCarly game. Though I do think it's funny that throughout the entire game they had these god-awful pixelated posters of real-life photos used to promote the show. In terms of character personality, we'll get a little bit more into that when we discuss the storyline, but really the only character that has any glimmer of personality is Chad Dylan Cooper, still being the same self-centered, egotistical actor that he is. So overall for characters, I think I'll give it a 6. Recognizable, but far from accurately portraying their actual on-screen characters. Moving on to the storyline is where things get a little bit interesting, mainly because there isn't one. So we'll have to adjust how we look at this section just a little bit. But this game is essentially a reskinned version of Mario Party, just using the Sunny with a Chance name. The boards are different sections of their studio, with the first board being different sets from different sketches, and the second being the green room and other places backstage, while everyone is essentially gunning for the most fan mail, which is what you win after each minigame or land on the classic Mario Party party blue space. Think of the fan mail like the coins from Mario Party. And honestly, as minor as it is, this is a pretty clever way to bring in an aspect of the show, as there is a whole episode dedicated to getting fan mail, and that is kind of the underlying theme in Sunny with a Chance, Sunny just trying to be popular and fit in with her cast. Though, like I mentioned earlier, there really isn't any sort of characterization of Sunny, or any of the cast members for that matter, as they are simply just avatars you can play as. Now, most of the mini games do take inspiration from sketches and other happenings in the show, like the minigame Free Yogurt, where you have to eat as much yogurt as possible. The so random cast actually sent Sunny to go get some frozen yogurt in the second episode, where she also met Chad Dylan Cooper for the first time. Or there's a minigame called Backpack Punch, which is inspired by the Bullyproof Backpack sketch, and of course, Let's Pee Pee Dance, which is based on the sketch So You Think You Can Pee Pee Dance. Though there are still a decent amount of filler minigames, such as just hanging up posters, several posing games, and several 
cleaning games too. But now to think about a score. I will say I am impressed at how many what seemed like regular mini games actually related to the show, like air hockey. There is an episode where Sunny goes on a date and they play air hockey, or musical chairs, the cast of So Random, and Mackenzie Falls compete in a game of musical chairs. I think for what it's worth, I'm going to put this one right in the middle of the pack at a five. Good nods to the show, but goes too far incorporating too many meaningless mini games. Now let's take a look at Easter eggs. And yes, we are using the term Easter egg very loosely in this video, but I think this game does a really good job of making you go, oh yeah, I remember that. Like for someone that hasn't seen the show since it aired, I had these moments while playing where I saw something in the game and the scene from the show started playing in my head. Like in the first board, you start out on the set for the Check It Out Girls and then immediately go into the set for So You Think You Can Pee Pee Dance. And the second board finally shows off their iconic green room, sarcophagus and all. Even minor details like the poster at Fatty's got included. And like I mentioned earlier, they used actual posters used to advertise the show throughout the backstage of the game. I think for this one, I'm going to give it a solid seven. They went out of their way to include stuff from the show that they really didn't have to. Now let's just talk about the game as a game. It's pretty bad. It's okay. It's, it's bad K. Look, I wouldn't suggest this game to anybody. For a game that has a lot of character, it also lacks a lot. You can't choose how many turns to play, making these games sometimes feel extremely long. You also don't get a mini game after everyone has had their turn. Instead, you only trigger a mini game when you land on a mini game space, meaning sometimes you can go like a full two turns without anything really ever happening. And the mini games are just bad and played terribly. And they also never really told you what any of the spaces mean. Like you get the general idea, but still for some, like this exclamation point, for example, don't really know what it means, but sometimes you would lose mail and sometimes you would get mail. And just a lot of the design still feels kind of empty. I did manage to always come out on top though. I am going to give it a four. It's playable, but just lacks a lot of dimension. So overall, Sunny with a Chance, an okay pairing for the show, but not a great game. Giving it a total score of 22 out of 40. Oof. Though next we will look at Phineas and Ferb for the Nintendo DS. And let me just say right off the bat, this one really impressed me. But first, let's take a look at those characters. And I think they nailed it. Obviously, cartoon characters translate better in video games, but they made all of the characters three-dimensional, and I think it works really well. Plus, they still give you the classic 2D character animations from the show, just in different parts. Though I will say that 3D Candace kind of giving me the heebie-jeebies. There is limited audible dialogue in this game, but when it does use it, it uses real audio clips from the show. Though usually these are like the main taglines like, What you doing? Herb, I know what we're gonna do today. And all of the characterization of them has been carried over too, with Candace trying to bust the boys. You still have all of Phineas and Ferb's friends. Jeremy is always looking for Candace. And for much of the building mini games, you get to play as Ferb because Phineas is more of the idea guy. But I do want to start the conversation about the lack of Perry in this game. I feel like Perry was always half, if not more, of the episode. And from what I've played, he's barely in it. Now, judging by the back of the box, there should be a Perry and Doofenshmirtz battle at some point. But after playing it for as long as I had, which was over four hours, I still never got to play as Perry, not even in a mini game. So by doxing two characters from the show, but doing a decent job on everyone else, I am going to give it an eight. And next, let's check out the storyline. And this is spot on. I think it's an almost perfect integration from the show to the video game. Each world will follow a new invention that Phineas and Ferb have made in the show. The first world being the very first episode, Roller Coaster, and the second was the Swinter episode. Though again, missing all aspects of Perry. But I will say, other than following the episode pretty much to a T, it kind of gives you more insight on what Phineas and Ferb do to get all these ideas together. You get to climb all through the neighborhood, collect collecting and building whatever it is. And you even get into the city, which is a nice perspective. And for the Swinter episode, you get to climb to the top of Mount Danville. And this all leads up to essentially a big mini game where you can ride the roller coaster or snowboard throughout Danville. And of course, each world ends with Candace trying to bust you, only for it all to be gone by the time their mom comes. Like I said, it's a pretty solid rendition of Phineas and Ferb. And I think exactly what I was expecting from a Phineas and Ferb game, and then some. I like how they didn't go rogue and stuck with the themes from the show, so it feels 
familiar, I think I will also give it an 8. Moving on to Easter eggs. And honestly, the game is pretty straightforward as to where everything is coming from, so there's not really too many things hidden here. Though the main one I want to point out, Perry related, well maybe Doofenshmirtz related, but every time you go into the city, in the background you can see something happening near like in one scene, there's a laser going crazy, perhaps the magnetism magnifier from that episode. Overall, the entire game does make you feel like you are playing in the Phineas and Ferb world, so I think again, I'll have to give it an 8. And from a gaming perspective, I was really pleasantly surprised, mainly as to how much playtime you can actually get out of it. You are going back and forth between stages in the world to make sure you collect everything, and sometimes you have to go to the next stage in order to unlock something in the characters to get to a different part in the previous stage, so it really does feel like an in-depth game, and not something where when you complete one stage, you move on to the next and that's it. The mini games are cool, where you can play your inventions from that day, though they are both currently very similar to one another. The building aspect I also liked, though found to be rather redundant and at times annoying. I personally don't like a game that is a 50-50 split between the button controls and touch. It just feels like there is so much back and forth. Like in this game, for example, you move around with the D-pad, but every other activity is essentially done with the touchpad, and it's precision type stuff, so you really do need to use the stylus. I remember one part in particular where I had to jump onto a higher platform, then immediately stop and build something, then use the D-pad, stop, build something, and it happened like three or four times in a row, though maybe it's my fault for being left-handed and the D-pad also being on that side. Another aspect of this game is dodging Candace, and when that part happens, it is absolutely terrifying. It's like she's rabbit. It turns into this Pac-Man-like maze, but every time it happens, it was this thrill because it was a little challenging, though it did happen a lot. Maybe I'm actually just really bad at this game. All in all, like I said, very impressed with this game. It's straightforward and just really makes you feel like you are getting your money's worth. I think I will give it a 7 this time. It would also be really cool to make a Phineas and Ferb game that's in like a Paper Mario-like design, so you can keep the 2D characters and fully feel like you are controlling them in their most familiar natural setting. But this gives Phineas and Ferb a solid 31. And finally, I dove into my personal collection. Let's take a look at That's So Raven for the Game Boy Advance. This one really didn't take many liberties. The main cast of characters dialogue is just as you'd expect, and we'll get into this in the next section, but this does have actual characters from the show in a way, as it does have cutscene photos and a vision clip that is used throughout. Their sprites though, yikes. They just look like blobs. At least Raven's is somewhat discernible with her fashion sense, and Principal Lawler with his excessive spit, and Ben Sturkey with his stank. There were also several obstacle characters, like a custodian that runs you down and a hall monitor, but it is a nice touch that among these are a couple of bullies that were in Alana's crew. They also add a few named NPCs to this, such as Horatio, who was always hounding Raven for burgers, and Freddy, who's losing the papers for his report all the time. I was really hoping that these were real people and I just didn't remember them, but unfortunately made up for the game. I would say they played it pretty safe. Again, I think it's expected for this time type of game, perhaps we'll do a 7. Next, let's talk storyline, which this one does not shy away from being taken directly from the show. Each world is a different episode. I played Run Raven Run, which follows the vision of Alana getting dumped with blue paint, Close Minded, which follows the school implementing uniforms, and ends with that great scene of Raven eating the wheel of Parmesan. And I also played Smell of Victory, which follows Raven being paired up with Stinky Sturkey. This game does what I feel like a lot of other tie-in games did for the Game Boy Advance, which was used stills from the actual show or movie, along with a couple sentences as to what is going on. This gets the job done and does feel like you are moving the plot along in each stage, though I do wish the caption was a little less like you are reading a kid's book of That's So Raven. However, some of the actual story for the gameplay itself is a bit much. Like when Raven gets paint dumped on Alana, the gameplay is Raven going to the mall to get her a bunch of presents in hopes that she forgives her, which didn't happen in the show and Raven would like never do that. That. Though perhaps the best accuracy of the entire game is when you get to play as the tracker that Cory makes for Raven in order to avoid Alana. Overall, I would give it a 7. It follows the show while taking some creative liberties in order to incorporate gameplay. Next, let's chat Easter eggs. And unfortunately, I wish there was more I could say here. This whole world feels pretty generic. Like maybe the school has the right color wall, but that's really about it. Especially when you play levels at the mall, this just really feels as generic 
dark as it gets. So while some characters had discernible features, the world in which it was played certainly does not. I am going to give it a 3. And lastly, let's talk gameplay. And it's a fine game. As I'm sure we'll look at in the future, this game is a pretty standard template for tie-in games. Though my favorite part, definitely the tracker mini game that I mentioned earlier. It just felt so much like a Disney online game. I will say this game is actually easier than a lot of other tie-in games I've played. Being able to pretty much breeze through the first few episodes in under an hour and a half. Now, would I recommend this game? Well, maybe for beginners now having said that, but for anyone else, it's a hard pass. Though I personally find it more enjoyable than Sunny with a Chance, it's just more my type of game, so I think I'll put it in the middle of the pack with a 5. That all said though, this actually ends up tying Sunny with a Chance with a total score of 22 out of 40. Well, here's the start of what will hopefully become a new series looking at some of the Disney Channel video games. Like I said, I just find these games to be so funny, and they were such a big part of my childhood. Let me know in the comments what you think of these games, and let me know what other games we should play next. And as always, thanks for watching.